Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, June 12, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. It's Microsoft's patch Tuesday and of course we'll have to start with what Microsoft had to offer today. It was a bit less than normal. We had 58 total vulnerabilities uh, being patched. Now, seven of these vulnerabilities are Chromium vulnerabilities, and as such, they affect Microsoft's Brave browser. And 51 vulnerabilities are sort of your classic uh, Microsoft vulnerabilities. Only one of these vulnerabilities is rated critical, and then we had one vulnerability that had been disclosed before. The disclosed vulnerability has actually been around for a while. It was first made public in February. A number of German researchers uh, did publish a paper and they called it Key Trap. It's a DNSSEC denial of service vulnerability. Nothing really all that outrageous and major. It did affect uh, most uh, DNS implementations, not just Microsoft's DNS implementation. And Microsoft now finally got around to actually fix uh, this vulnerability. The one critical vulnerability affects the Microsoft message uh, queuing service. This has been a service uh, that uh, has had issues in the past port 1801 TCP is how you reach this service. It can be a little bit a tricky one according to some because, well, uh, there's a lot of third-party services that often use this service. So uh, that may uh, make it a little bit more difficult to figure out uh, where it's actually being used in your environment. Port 1801 shouldn't really be open for inbound traffic into your environment. So that should certainly help here with mitigation. We do see quite a good number. It's not sort of a top port as far as the port scanning goes that we detect, but there is sort of what I refer to as a background hum, where you have sort of a consistent background noise of hits to port 1801. Probably need to take a closer look to see what exactly they're looking for, if they're looking for this Microsoft message queuing or uh, something else. Other than that, you got your usual remote code executions in Office products, uh, some kernel privilege escalation vulnerabilities. So in short, apply these patches as usual. Nothing that needs sort of specific escalation here. Just follow your standard patch procedure. And just in case you wonder about Adobe, didn't see any patches being announced from Adobe today. And JetBrains fixed a vulnerability that does affect all of its IntelliJ-based products. IntelliJ is sort of a generic Java-based IDE, and most JetBrains products, they are PHP Storm, PyStorm, and all of these products do include IntelliJ or are based around IntelliJ. The problem here is that the GitHub integration actually leaks the access credentials uh, to GitHub if you are making a pull request from a malicious repository. In order to be vulnerable, you need to actually issue the pull request from the IDE itself. Many people, I know myself, find it a little bit more convenient to do it sort of from the command line versus from the IDE. So that's required in order to trigger the vulnerability. It does affect both OAuth as well as personal access tokens. If you are worried about possibly having exposed them, you need to revoke those credentials and create new ones. And yes, we do have another Veeam authentication bypass vulnerability, this time affecting the Veeam Recovery Orchestrator or VRO. In order to exploit a vulnerability, an attacker needs to know the exact username and role of the account that they are trying to impersonate. This sounds very much like the vulnerability I actually covered yesterday. I double checked, it's a different CVE number, so maybe similar or same vulnerability, just in a slightly different Veeam product. And finally, sort of one of those fun IoT vulnerabilities, IBM's X-Force has a blog with details regarding a couple of vulnerabilities in pre-core treadmills. 
One of the more severe ones is an exposed SSH key pair that would allow someone root level access to three versions of the console. And with that, an attacker could also affect the functionality of the threat mail, like for example, causing a sudden stop, which of course could have possible safety implications. Well, this is it for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for liking and special thanks to anybody who ever left a good comment about this podcast. So thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.